Greetings, near do wells. Today we're going to have a look at a little project, a clone of this uh, Philip Reese V4 through unit. It's passive, it doesn't require power. I've had it for a, quite a few years and it's never really let me down. I recommend this build. It's quite easy to disassemble. I've been thinking about having uh, uh, trying to clone this for a while when I've uh, got some time to have a look at it. There's a transistor required, there's a couple of resistors, two diodes, that was a hex inverting buffer, and that looks like a filament bulb. That doesn't illuminate, by the way, when there's MIDI going th through, so I'm not too sure what it's for. Um, I'm guessing it could be for uh, overload protection. I did put a one and a half volt battery across it and it illu illuminated slightly. Um, it's the first thing really that comes out from the uh, MIDI in there and we'll trace that through. And there's the filament bulb uh, pins there. And then that just goes out to um, the uh, similar pins on the MIDI throughs. Anyway, uh, in this little clone I'm, I've uh, admitted using that bulb and it still works fine. Now this is one that I built and we'll have a look at the strip board layout. I did quite a tidy job on this uh, using cutoffs there for the earthen connections and panel wired uh, all the other connections. It's quite a straightforward build. We'll have a look at this in depth in a bit. Also um, I ended up uh, utilizing this I've actually made it a five way MIDI through we'll talk about that later um, that's from a common circuit that there is for a powered MIDI through unit anyway I take that out and um, put one of these in now then what I did was take a photo of the rear and flipped it in uh, Art Studio on the iPad and combined it with the top view and uh, then I had a couple of layers to work on and I could fade one in and out just to uh, make sense of the tracks there. There isn't really much to it, but I, I couldn't make head nor tail of it uh, until I did that. Okay, it's a bit scribbled, but it was enough for me to work on to um, start laying it out for a strip board. And we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so here's the layout for the four-way uh, passive MIDI through. That's the female sockets viewed from the front. And if we have a look at the uh, MIDI in and count clockwise uh, and on the second pin, you will panel mount wires to repeat to the other MIDI outs. It's all laid out there in a the picture. I don't know why I'm talking through it. So yeah, a panel mount with wires there and that also goes to pin one. And you can see that there isn't a, a cut trace on that top row. So that's going to power and pin one. And pin one, I believe that is just pulled high. That's an unused buffer, but I'm, I've done a, a five way MIDI through and I will be using that anyway. On the counting clockwise from the MIDI in again, so you've got all the earthing points, earth to uh, pin 7 of the IC, and repeat it out to the other sockets too. And then uh, the fourth pin counting clockwise, I'm going to call that the data pin, that goes to the bottom row uh, through that circuitry with the transistor and the diodes. Now, I believe this is to... Hmm, uh, supply additional power when the MIDI signal isn't there. I'm, I'm not too sure why it's there, but I tried this um, with different transistors and they and they wouldn't work. A 3904, for example, a similar transistor. I think these resistor values are quite critical to its operation, so you will have to get that transistor there that I've uh, labelled. Uh, that signal also goes through that top 10k resistor into pin 3 and then that is mirrored out basically with the links to all the other buffers in that chip and here's a picture of that chip. 
And there, if you're interested, there you can see uh, where the buffers are. You basically just one in and one out. And that helps to maintain the integrity of this signal, I'm going to say. Now here is the layout of the five-way that I did. Um, now that pin one that was initially pulled high, I'm using that. That's the uh, that's the additional through that I've got. Now I do want to say that I have uh, gone to a secret location and tested this uh, using uh, uh, Ableton to sequence and sequence out the five uh, MIDI items that I have. And uh, you know, it performs well. Um, now, there is a rule saying that you should have all these opto-isolated. Now, you can't get a, power, a, a, a uh, passive MIDI device if it's opto-isolated because we need to power that chip. Um, however, um, I, I'm pretty sure these are quite popular and, uh, you know, these still go for a good price second hand. And I have had no problems with it. Obviously, your equipment's opto isolated anyway. So, definitely build this if you want a nice portable uh, MIDI 3 unit. Um, you might be able to build two because I brought, um, you know, a pair of chips that were in, in a sale, and, and, and you get um, maybe five transistors as well for a pound or two. Um, that's a Zena diode, the 2.4 volt Zena diode there, and the 4148. So this is a slightly amended layout from the previous one, but this is given five MIDI throughs. Any questions, leave them in the comments, but um, I can guarantee you this works. And I, I did also try different hex buffers, 40106, and I think the CD4069, they didn't work. Well, they did without the transistor. But I really wanted to put that transistor and diode circuit in because uh, I believe that's um, potentially crucial to its operation. So you will have to go with these exact components. Well, I rattled through that demonstration. So you can build uh, a four-way or a five-way. Might as well build the five-way. Unless you've got a tin this side and there's really only enough of four there. Just take a look at that wiring again. If it's a snug enclosure like this one then even I had to make it uh, quite tidy nice easy build not too expensive um, I hope that brings you some satisfaction and uh, see you next time